I hope it's apparent to you what we should do now. Now we can finally answer the main question, because now we know three numbers about Alice. Once we know three numbers, we should be able to pick out a kinematics equation. Now, Alice does not have a constant velocity, so for her, we should choose from the standard five kinematics equations. Alice has constant acceleration, but she does not have constant velocity, so we're not going to deal with Alice the same way we did with Bob. Um, for Alice, we can just choose from the standard five kinematics equations. Remember that the way we do that is to ask which variable we're kind of ignoring. Well, it looks like we're going to be basically ignoring Alice's final velocity. So we should pick the equation um, that is missing the final velocity. Here's the equation that's missing the final velocity, and now we can plug in. What do we plug in for displacement? Well, that's the number that we just figured out, positive 15. Again, in these videos, I'm not going to plug the units into the equations, um, but I definitely am going to indicate the signs. So that's positive 15. Now we can plug in Alice's initial velocity, but that was zero, and Alice's time, five seconds. That doesn't need a sign because time is always positive. What do we plug in for Alice's acceleration? Well, that's the unknown, the question, so we don't plug in for that. And for the time, again, we can plug in 5. This term drops out because it's got a 0, so we simplify. 5 squared is 25. There's a couple different ways that you could simplify this problem. You could just do um, 25 divided by 2, or 1 times 25 over 2 times 1. So this is basically 25 divided by 2, which is 12.5. 12.5. Now the 12.5 is being multiplied times the acceleration, so we need to do the opposite. We need to divide. by 12.5. We need to do that to both sides. We can use our calculator to do 15 divided by 12.5. 15 divided by 12.5 comes out to be 1.2, or thereabouts. I don't remember if that came out exactly or approximately when I did it on the calculator. But anyway, that comes out to be around 1.2. All right, now let's process that because that's supposed to be our final answer. One thing that's very important is to indicate the sign. Mathematically, this came out positive, so we should indicate that it's positive. Now, is that what we expected? Did we expect her acceleration to be positive? Yes, because we know she's speeding up. Uh, since we have her with a, um, since she's speeding up, um, her uh, acceleration should end up uh, pointing to the right. If the acceleration had come out negative for Alice, we would know we'd made a mistake. And let's write the units. The final answer is not acceptable unless we have the units and the sum. So here's the answer to the question. Alice is accelerating at positive 1.2 meters per second squared. Well, this problem uh, introduced two important issues that I'd like to review. Um, right now. One important issue is I think this is the first problem that we've done that involved more than one object, multiple objects. Here we have two objects, Bob and Alice. So this is more difficult than the problems that we've seen before, but I hope you can see that you can continue to use the five-step method. For example, we continue to draw the path, it's just that since there was two objects, we drew two paths. So keep drawing the path, but if there's two objects, draw two paths. Um, and since there's two objects, you should draw the velocities and accelerations for both of them. That's something that we're trying to start to do now next to each path to show the velocity and the acceleration vectors. 
Um, by the same token, um, we should write down the variables for each object separately. So don't get lazy. Don't try to start skipping some of these steps. Make sure that you're writing all of the relevant variables for both objects. Keep writing all the very, uh, relevant variables for each object. All right, and then we came across really a very important strategy for multiple object problems. There's two parts. First of all, um, if two things are different, don't use the same symbol for them. This really seems obvious and trivial, but it's amazing how often uh, students ignore this. All the time, students will use the same symbol for things that are different. Well, it's just common sense that you can't use the same symbol for things that are different. You have to use different symbols for things that are different. Um, how do you make two symbols different? Well, a lot of the time you can do that with subscripts. Since Alice's um, acceleration was different from Bob's acceleration, we used subscripts to distinguish between Alice's acceleration and Bob's. So if two things are different, use different symbols for them, usually by using subscripts. And the flip side of that is, if two things are the same, you should use the same symbol for them. For example, in this case, both people were moving for the same time. So it would be needlessly confusing to use t sub a for, uh, I'm sorry, t sub b for Bob's time and t sub a for Alice's time. That would actually just confuse us and mess us up. So you should definitely should use the same symbol for things that are the same. Use the same symbol for things that are the same and use different symbols for things that are different. Uh, again, we used the same symbol for both people's displacement because those are the same. But their velocities and accelerations were different, so we used different symbols for those people using subscripts. That's really one of the keys to any multiple object problem. The key is carefully think about which things are the same and which things are different. When you see that things are the same, use the same symbol for them. And when you see that things are different, use different symbols for them. This is worth emphasizing because multiple object problems are not just important in kinematics, uh, but they're probably even more important when you get to using Newton's second law and mechanics. And again, one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're trying to do a problem with multiple objects using Newton's second law is that they use the same symbol for two things that are not the same. Well, uh, that just violates common sense. If things are different, you've got to use different symbols for them. Uh, so a key for a multiple object problem is to think. You have to think carefully about every single concept and ask, is this concept the same for the two objects or is this concept different for the two objects? If you are consciously thinking about what's the same and what's different, you'll probably notice what's the same and what's different. And when you see that things are the same, you can use the same symbol for them. And when you see that things are different, you can use different symbols. This is really crucial, so I'll repeat it one more time. If you're dealing with multiple objects, think carefully about each concept and ask, is this concept the same for the two objects or different for the two objects? If it's the same for the two objects, use the same symbol like we use the same symbol for displacement and time. But if, the concept, uh, but if the concept has a different value for the two objects, use different symbols, which you usually indicate with subscripts, like we did for the acceleration and the velocity here. Okay, so that's how you deal with multiple objects. And of course, if you have multiple objects, um, what do you do if you can't answer the question directly? Well, if you can't answer the question directly, maybe it will help to figure out more stuff about the other object. And then you can transfer that information down to the object you really care about. In this problem, we mainly cared about Alice, but we couldn't answer the question about Alice directly. Instead, first we had to figure out what Bob's displacement was. That told us that that was also Alice's displacement, and then we could answer the question about Alice. So if you can't answer the question directly, try to find a sub-question that you can answer. That's a really useful notation that I encourage you to start using. If you can't answer the main question directly, try to find a sub-question that you can answer, and then see if that helps you to answer the main question. All right, the other big new issue that we learned how to deal with here was objects that are moving with constant velocity. All along in these videos, we've been dealing with constant acceleration, but here we're seeing what happens when you have a constant velocity, um, and again, the key thing for constant velocity is um, that uh, you don't really use the standard five kinematics equations. If you're moving with constant velocity, you basically just use distance equals rate times time, displacement equals velocity times time. And if you know two of those variables, you can find the third one. The standard five kinematics equations are not that useful when you have constant velocity. Instead, just use displacement equals velocity times time, just like we did for Bob. On the other hand, Alice was a standard constant acceleration um, situation where the velocity was not constant, so for Alice we did use the standard five kinematics equations. All right, well there was a lot of uh, new issues that came up in this problem. I'll bet a lot of people had trouble with this problem or did not do it as systematically or as confidently as they could have. Um, so unless this problem was a real breeze for you, I really encourage you to um, now go back and redo the problem again. Try to focus not just on getting the problem right, but using a good systematic approach. 
drawing paths for both objects, indicating the variables for both objects, thinking about which variables are the same and which variables are different, where you need the same symbols and when you need different symbols. Um, try to keep redoing this problem until it's boringly easy, until you pretty much uh, feel very comfortable with both the multiple objects aspect and the constant velocity aspect.